I as Cameron Reynolds looked at those pollen baskets down there. And there's another one. This is a pretty smallish hive. Mostly it's yellow. I've seen a little bit of orange today, but this is not usual for the first week of August. There's another basket. That's awesome. With the pollen patties we're feeding, we're getting good results. But I wanted to show you this hive here because this is one of our, what a lot of people call queen castles, but you know it's, it's designed for mating queens. I got 75% takes this year. We got two sets of three out of three to come back. We got one set of one out of three to come back. And then this last time, and I'm gonna just stop for the year. I don't have to, but I'm just going to. We got two out of three. And so I did something that I wanted to show you, which is nice with these style of boxes. Now, if you'll notice, this isn't the original box. The other one, I was kind of desperate because I was using all the other ones. And it was one that hadn't got wax dipped yet. So once I freed up a box, of wax, uh, one that was wax dipped, I swapped it out. And if you'll notice on the sides, there's two holes, one up top, one on the bottom, front and back. Um, front has two holes and there's two holes on this side as well. I really think that's important. Um, we just didn't do that early on, but we, you definitely need to have that hole, I think, up above. You can screen it off, but I don't like doing that. There's no reason for not them not to have another entrance and they can blow in the bottom and force that hot air up top out of the colony. It seems to work a lot better. Also, I don't recommend that you have your hives next to a metal shed like this because it will warm them up in a hurry. So let's get in here and check and see what we have. Now you'll notice I plugged the front of the entrance, well, the, uh, the middle compartment, and you can see where it's been divided into three pieces almost the entire time. And this right here just keeps them, it goes down and they glue it to the division boards, but right now it only has one in there. I just put some Apivar strips in there because they've been going all season without any type of treatment. So here we have it. Now we took the two dividers that there was one here and one here and we just left one and we put it in the middle slot and so now we are able to have two colonies in here because of, and I just combined the bees that were in the middle one um, with the other two. I wasn't planning on doing any more mating nukes and that way we didn't lose any bees out of the deal. Um, both of these nukes look pretty good. This one's a little bit lighter when it comes to size. Now I had to plug the front entrances because I wasn't thinking when I drilled them and this goes right in between that hole. And because of that, the left side and the right side can both use those front entrances and I'd rather have that separate. Last thing I want is one of the queens to go around that uh, you know, rare chance that they will, but I just plugged it up anyways because they don't really need it. All right, let's dive down in here and see what we've got. Now, ideally, when you're doing something like this, you're gonna leave this on one you don't want that queen to run on over and we're just going to spread these out a little bit there's one of our jay-z bz cups well, this this setup did really good again getting nine queens out of 12 is great whenever you're raising queens always plan on loss you just never know if you're going to get the one out of three or the three out of three a lot depends on weather and things look at that right there That's a really nice looking brood pattern. And right there, of course, when we start doing the video, they start bush hogging that land. I don't think they've bush hogged that for three years. So <laughs> that's just the way it goes. We're gonna leave that out here. And I'm just gonna check probably one more frame. I see cap brood over on this edge frame right here. Let's check this center frame right here. Obviously, there's so many bees, we are going to have to do something else now. They're really starting to expand and that's the nice thing about these boxes here is there's a lot of options mating nukes three-way compartment i really like having three in a 10 frame i don't like having four it just i feel like two frames a piece just isn't enough flexibility a good three frame colony is pretty pretty good shape two frames is kind of like eh well, they're just now capping all this it's looking really good though we're going to put some pollen patty in here 
as it's supposed to just continue getting hot again and if it dries out it'll pollens will disappear on us just tons of brood every frame has got some brood on it I'm gonna have to all we have to do is pull this five frame nuke and stick it in a 10 frame box and baby it or if we don't want to do that we can use this as a resource hive and you can make these things to where they stack with a little bit more um, carpentry work you can make your boxes to where you could stack one on top of the other and have um, two compartments and just have it going up or you can just pull a frame of brood we could take one of these good cat frames of brood and we can give it to a colony that needs it maybe if we're making a split or maybe making more mating nukes there's a lot of options and these little colonies give you that all right looking really good and you know you could always equalize you know when we had situations where one of these in the when we were doing mating nukes we had three of these compartments and one of them got a little bit too big or one of them maybe got too small we could always pull out a frame of brood cap brood and swap it for maybe a lesser frame of brood or no brood in another compartment look right down there you can see this other groove that we cut out and that's where it was before and that just works exceptionally well for us i don't see the queen and i mean there's really no reason to there's just eggs and larvae everything looks really good i threw pollen patties in here last time i'm fixing to show you what we're going to do pollen patty wise oh there she is i missed her on this frame you all might have seen her there she is right there nice carny queen kind of looks like a tiger stripes back there excellent 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 so, I mean, if we want this colony for honey production, we'll take this five-frame nuke out of here and give it some drawn combs and baby them the rest of the year in preparation for next season. You know, or there's other things. Some people say they haven't seen many small high beetles this year, and we haven't either, but they're starting to show up. There's one less one. All right, so let's get some pollen patty over here. Oh, yeah. So this is the uh, pollen patty mix that I'm using now. Um, I did a video on it. I'll leave that up here. You see how we mix these buckets pretty easy. Look at that right there. But it's nice and soft so the bees eat it quickly. Now you can't keep this in a moist area. If you put some saran wrap or something that helps too. But don't leave the lid off of it or in a moist area or you're going to have some issues. Whoops. Well, we're adding some fiber there. It's organic, I believe. We, we don't do anything to our grass, if you can call it grass. Man, now my hands are going to be all sticky. Oh, well, bees will love me. So now we're just going to kind of do that right there and just section that off. And you know what? I just about sat down in that bucket. That... <laughs> That would have been good for the video. <laughs> that would have been awkward if I'd have turned around and had a bunch of that hanging off my rear end. That would have been weird. My daughter would have died. She's at that stage now where I'm starting to get to be the embarrassing dad. All right, here's the other Jay-Z BZ. Let's just scoot these on over. Ooh, that sun's coming back out. Go away, Mr. Sun. All right, so this colony de definitely has a smaller population. You can see pollen baskets. I'm not seeing any brood on this frame. And let's just go a frame or two over and see what's up. That looks good. That's a, that's a nice looking pattern. It's not huge, but you can tell that the viability of the queen, um, her, her sperm, and the viability of her offspring is good with that good of a percentage there. Some of those haven't even been capped yet. They're just starting to cap that one. So we're going to go over to the next frame. This one looks even better. Now I got a little cell down here and it's got something in it. 
Now that might have happened because we combined these together. That's something to watch out for. You see something like that. Sometimes it's when you combine bees together and they kind of like, hey, we don't really like this new queen. Doesn't smell right. You get some rogue bees raising a cell. I'm gonna come back probably here in a, a week and just check this colony again and make sure they're not continuing to do that. There's obviously nothing wrong with this queen whatsoever. Again, um, probably happened when I combined them. Sometimes that can happen. Um, there's a lot of variables when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, and probably nine times out of 10 that wouldn't happen, but they do sometimes. There's probably anything on that furthest frame. And this is another great frame of larvae. And there's the queen right there. She looks a little bit different than her sister, even though she's the same age group. Just goes to show you the genetic diversity in bees. And I don't go for color, I go for performance. Just gauging what little I can off of these girls, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. Now, we don't have any feeders in this, as you can see, so how do we feed these bees throughout the season? Well, we have colonies that end up either with extra sugar syrup or just frames of honey, and um, we'll throw them in here. If they get light, we'll throw a full frame in here, and that, that's the best way to take care of these. Um, it, big scale, that doesn't work super good, I guess, but small scale, it works just fine. You know, I just realized he's cutting all that down, and there's all kinds of goldenrod and ragweed and everything in there that our bees need. It's a big bummer. I, I totally understand people bush hogging because you can't let things get too far gone, but... I wish people would understand that there's certain times of the year that it's better for the bees. Right now, those plants are just fixing to start blooming a lot. and would have produced really well for our bees. Um, I, I wish people would wait to do it right after bloom, right after they seed sometime in fall, or even just do it in early spring um, if there's nothing on there, just so that they have the plants have the rest of the season to grow. But a lot of people look at that and they just see that's, that's awful looking. Those weeds are terrible, but that's that's what our pollinators need. And it's not just honeybees. There's a lot of habitat out there, seeds for birds, seeds uh, for a lot of creatures out there. But anyways, um, let's throw a little bit more pollen patty on here and throw this back in. I'll probably uh, yank these out of here. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with them. I was just using this for making queens, so this one doesn't need as much patty. Spread it out a little bit and wow. Look at them go at that patty over there. Now well, I must have missed that one on the thing. There you go. Your sisters will help you out. That's gonna take a while to get over that. So we're, we're going to smoke these bees down. Not much smoke coming out of here. Mm -hmm. right, get them out of the way. and Now we really need to make sure that we get this down really good. And the most even way to do that is just to stick this lid back on. just kind of put your knee on it when you got patties like that and there you go so this has been a, a really fun um, little adventure with this, uh, this setup look at all these pollen baskets right here oh, two of them just went in but I'm loving it but you can see the double hole system it's very hot right now it's about 95 um, they, they'll beard up out here but that extra hole up top makes a huge difference and these wax dip boxes work really good I like these exterior handles because it's very easy to haul. Um, but you can make these no problem. I'll try to do a build on them this winter. It's not that complicated. Anyways, thanks for watching our videos and we'll see you next time.